Michael Caine is here. He's been making movies for 50 years and shows no signs of slowing down. In fact, he is having, some say, the time of his life. His new film is The Prestige. It features Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale. And here is the trailer for the film. How does he do it? You want the truth. Nothing is impossible. I reckon that bro. No more secrets. Secrets of my life. The last person we saw was... Re Rebecca Hall. Yeah. Peter She's, Hall's daughter. Uh, yeah, the director Peter Hall and the American opera singer is it Margaret Ewing. Yes. Yeah, that's that's her daughter. That's I've never seen her in a film before. She's brilliant. Really good. Really, really good. There's a good cast in this film. Oh, yeah. There are no lemons in this one. <laughs> it's, a sign, it's a sign of a good director. I, I remember I once said to John Huston, I'm working with John Huston. Now, don't be name dropping with me. No, that's not name dropping. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm kidding. That's, I'm kidding. that's my workmates. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, said, I said to John Huston, what's the art of directing? He said, casting. If you yeah. cast it right, that's, you're all right. You can do impressions too, can't you? Yeah, uh, that was John Huston. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't do any I don't do any Yes, any you do. No, I don't. Yes, no, you do. No. Don't you? Gregory Peck sneezing. <laughs> <laughs> don't know. You said this. Yeah, yeah, good. I'm just going to do it. Okay, go ahead. Gregory Peck sneezing. Achoo. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? There must be somebody else oh, in, no, in this repertoire. I forget now. I can't. I'm with jet lag, so I don't know who. Well, just give me I a can't bit. even do impression impression of me. Everyone does an impression of me. I know they me. do. It's very easy to do. It's very easy to do, yeah. yeah. I, even I can do it. Because the cockney is part of it is what makes yeah, it easy. Very much so. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a very individual voice, so <laughs> yes. everybody recognizes it. Just give me a little bit more of John Houston then. Um, I, I'm doing a scene in a movie. It's going very well. Long speech. And he said, cut. And I said, what's, what's wrong? What's wrong? He said, you can speak faster, Michael. He's an honest man. That's <laughs> great. <laughs> I, when, I got, when I got the, the man who would be king, I was in the George Sank Hotel in Paris. Yes. And the phone went, and I picked it up and said, Michael Caine. And I thought, that sounds like John Huston. I said, who is this? And I thought it was one of my mates yeah. doing me up, you know. And he, and he said, I'd like to do a movie with you. you want to, would you like to talk to me about a movie? And I said, yes. I said, I'll see you anywhere you like. He said, I'm in the bar in the Hotel de Gaulle next door. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and That's he, how I got the man who would be king. But, so you, he, you went over and had a drink with him and he hired you? Yeah. And it was 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, was Sean already on board? Probably. I think, so. I think he was, yeah. yeah. I think he was. I think he'd seen him in America, but this was Paris. Now, are you two friends? Sean and I? Yes. We are such close friends, yeah. We 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 met Sean. I'll tell you a little story. Okay. South Pacific opens in London, right? Now, they're looking for all these great big American sailors to sing, there is nothing like a dame. And they, <laughs> they give an audition for British chorus boys, you know, and they come and go, there's nothing like a dame. And a guy goes, oh, Jesus Christ, we've got to get some more butch people than this. So Josh Logan, I think it was directed it, he sent his talent scouts round the gymnasiums, you know, find big yeah. guys, you know, stand up the back at least, look like big tough sailors. And Sean was Mr. Edinburgh, and he was trying to be Mr. World, like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, right. He was like that. Yeah. He was the Scottish Arnold Schwarzenegger then. And he got a, a part, uh, he got a chorus role in South Pacific. And on the first Saturday night of the opening, he came to a party, uh, a very humble party, sort of, Bring a bottle and a bird, you know. Bring a girl and a bottle. So, you, a bottle and, and a girl. A, a bottle and a girl. Uh, and and so I took two girls, and Sean walked in, and I immediately became his best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the start of it. We, we've been, oh yeah, we're very close friends. Very. And you stay up, you stay in touch, and you, yeah, as you much have, as we can. Because he lives together. in Nassau. You know, right. actors. You know, I have great friends. Roger Moore is another one. He lives in Switzerland. But we sort of pick up the conversation where we, we left off. Yeah, all do the you time. play golf like Sean does? No, no. I, 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 I was going to play golf, and Sean tried to teach me once, and I thought he was going <laughs> to strangle me, so I, I never. <laughs> and he gave up. <laughs> yeah, he gave up. I gave up. I thought, oh, shoot, I don't want to do this. I hate this question, but I, because we're talking about this and men who would be king, who, on the, all the films you've done, tell mm. me the top three or four in terms of you, in terms of. In terms of me. Um, Educating Rita, right. uh, The Quiet American, yeah. and Alfie. 
they, they're defining moments for me. Uh, uh, edu- Alfie, of course, made me a star. Educating Rita was the best I'd ever been up until that date, and The Quiet America, and I beat it. My, this is all in my own mind. No, no, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. How you see it. Uh, how I see it, because what I saw in Educating Rita, I was absolutely convincing in someone who was very far away from me in character. Yeah. And in The Quiet American, I was absolutely convincing in someone who was even farther away from me in, in, in character. You're absolutely right. You know what makes you the, the great conversationalist is that for those kinds of questions, you have these smart answers. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell me the questions. I know. I didn't know. That's all. I could have given you dumb my answers. Brain up my, you, you know when you yeah. see those talk shows, you know the guy has been, been you prepared his questions and all that. That's, yeah. That gets really dumb, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. No, it's not you. <laughs> Never been you. I've been on you, with you several uh, times. Yeah. More than several. Yeah. Well, no, when they try to te- say, he, here are the questions. I said, don't, please don't tell me the questions. Yeah. Please well, they don't. They do do that. They tell you, here's they the questions. They sometimes say, here's the questions. Okay, why do you like this movie? This movie is unique. I've done, I've Amen. done, I've played the lead in about 79 movies, 80 movies. And so, therefore, when you send me a script, I usually go, well, I did that one in 1978. I did that one in 1964. <laughs> because yeah. it, it goes around a lot. Yeah. This movie is completely and utterly unique. I've never seen a script like it or a movie like it. And also, plus, uh, I'm working with Christopher Nolan and Christian Bale, who we did Batman Begins together. Yeah. So uh, it, I, I've not only got this script that I think is extraordinary, I'm, I'm working with two friends. It's about magic. It's about two magicians, and it's, it's about obsession. Obsession and paranoia. Magicians are obsessive because otherwise they wouldn't be magicians. You've got to keep, you know, you do that card trick 3,000 times before you even get it right. They've yes. got to be yes. obsessive. And they're paranoid because they always worry someone's going to steal their trick and they're through. They're, their career's over. It's in those days when there were great big tricks be, yeah. because they were magicians. This takes place in Victorian London and magicians then were like the rock stars and movie stars of the time. They were yeah. very, very famous. Yeah. I mean, in America, Houdini. You yeah, still, exactly. Everyone still exactly. knows Houdini is. Exactly. The uh, You know that Houdini, I, I may be wrong about this. I may be wrong, but Houdini, Harry Houdini. Yes. And Sir Arthur Conan Doyle were great pals. Were they? Great friends. Yeah, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. But I, like in this movie, it's a funny thing about that. In this movie, there's a character called Tesla. Yes. Played by David Bowie. Yeah, David Bowie. Bowie, yeah, yes. very good. Well, David was a, when I first met David, he wasn't a singer or music. He was an actor. Yeah, we come from South London, the same place. Yeah, uh, um, <laughs> and um, he plays this character called Tesla, and I never knew until after I'd made the movie that he was a real man. Tesla was a, a, a Serb who created electricity before uh, Edison, the telephone before. Uh, Alexander Graham Bell right. and the radio before Marconi and got screwed out of all of them. And he is one He is one of the lead characters in our movie. Extraordinary. He actually he, did these things? Or he did these. No, he's actually, it's actually true. Yeah. Created all of those things? Oh, he created all of those things. And, and, and he was a Serb who was born in Croatia. So there's always a big fight because everyone's trying to claim him. I know all this because <laughs> I was being interviewed by a Serbian Journalism, journalist right. and she said she was from Serbia. And I thought, I think Tesla came from around there. So I said to her, Do you, have you ever heard of a man called Tesla? And she did 20 minutes on it. She knew him like he was a national oh, hero. She knew, she told me everything about him. Yeah, <laughs> his, yeah. His yeah, house is a monument. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? We worship like, it. It's like, it's like, yeah. Well, it's like if I'd said to a, 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 an American, have you ever heard of Thomas Edison? Exactly. Yeah. Right. All right, take a look at this. This is where <laughs> you, your character, Cutter, talks to Angier, uh, played by Jackman and uh, Borden, who's played by... Uh, Kristen Bale about magic. If you want to see what it takes to make real magic, go to the Tenley. You two go and see that show, and whichever one of you can tell me how he does a goldfish bowl trick gets the prize. Right. Which is? Ten minutes on stage with my old friend, the top theatrical agent in London. What do you do when you're not working? Me? You. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very much a home person. Uh, people say to me, where do you go for your holidays? I say, I go home. <laughs> I have a wonderful home. And which a wonderful we built wife. I have a great wife, yeah. an incredible <laughs> wife. I've been married to her. <laughs> <a, she's, laughs> I've been married to her for 34 years. She is 
Gorgeous. She, she is gorgeous. She, she's gorgeous. unique. She's the only person in the world I've ever met who nobody has a single bad thing to say about her. There is nothing bad about her. There's she's, lots bad about her. They all, it's me who takes all this flack. Yeah, she's, she's Indian. She's it's Kashmiri. Kashmiri. Kashmiri, yeah. So uh, she's uh, one part Indian, one part Pakistani? Uh, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a Kashmiris and Muslims. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and she's Muslim. Uh, and um, she's the most beautiful woman I ever saw, which is handy because I, I work with beautiful women the whole time. I think, that, and, uh, I think that's the sort so of thing. So you're not unlikely to be. Yeah, I, I, you know, off, I, I, I'm, I'm not, my eyes don't stray very far. So you're working as much as you want to. I work, ex I do exactly, I have this luxury, I just read scripts and I, I go, I, yes, I, I set my own standard, which is from the Godfather, someone's got to make you an offer you can't refuse. Yeah, right, right, it's right. got nothing to do with money, <laughs> it's just a script. And this script, I read it, the next thing I do is a remake of, of Sleuth yes. with Jude Law, written by Harold Pinter, I can't refuse that. Right. And then the next one after that is a Batman number two, uh, Batman part two, which I... You but not only want to do because I did. I played the butler in the first one, right. but I also have a contract to do it. I don't know. It may be called the Dark Knight. That's probably a good payday. Or the Joker. Isn't it? That's probably a good payday, isn't it? Yeah, I've never been in those big movies before. You know, <laughs> that's why I did it. I was I was about seventy. I think they gave yeah. me this big blockbuster movie. Yeah. Is Always. anybody that you have wanted to work with just very much, and it hasn't happened for any? Particular I've never worked for Scorsese or Spielberg. Never work for them. I mean, this isn't a plea or anything. No, no, like, no, I'm, I'm I up in my butt and it'd work. You know, I've got just as much work as they have. I know that, but you never work with them. And in, in... no, have you ever told them I'd love to work with you? And no, I never tell anyone anything. I just told you that. Yeah, I know, but the minute know. I did, I regretted it. Why? Because <laughs> it looks like you're telling yourself. It looks yourself. like I'm saying, "Oh, I wish." No, it's yeah. all right. I don't need a job. I'm okay. I'm trying to retire, but the thing is. You don't retire in this business. The business retires you. And there's still a demand for Michael Caine. And while there is, if there's stuff that I really, really want to do, I mean, I, I just got a little tiny British movie that I'm doing for scale, you know? Why are you doing a tiny little movie? Because British I love movie? it so much. A small little movie? Yeah. And what made you like it so much? It's real. It's, it's, it's a fantasy, but it looks real. It's, a, it's about a little boy who lives in an old people's home because his parents own it. Yeah. And he's interested in ghosts because they keep dying around him. Yes. His friends always drop dead. And then this very old magician comes in yeah. to die and takes him through to find the ghosts. And you are? The old magician. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so you live in Los Angeles now? No, I live back in, in England. London. Yeah, I lived in Los Angeles for about eight years. Then yeah. I missed the rain, so I went home. <laughs> and when didn't, I went home, it stopped raining. You did the rain. I did, did. It never rains in Los Angeles. I know that, but did you miss it? Yeah, I missed... You missed the sort of... Seasons. Seasons, yeah. Seasons, I think, is the word I'm looking for. Seasons. Yeah. And I suppose when you get older, you sort of go home to die. You know, you go yeah. back to where you right, came right. from. I, I had all that great stuff. Do you stuff. think about dying at all? Never. Never. No, no. You never thought, well, gee, when I die, this is what I'd like for them to say about me. This is the service I'd like. This is the, these are the hymns I'd like to be sung. No, no, these are the no, people I I'd like to speak it. for me. All I ever do is go try and find vitamins to keep me. <laughs> I, I take all this stuff. Say, do this you some, really? Yeah. Are you a hypochondriac? No, 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 I'm not a hypochondriac. I, I'm one step further than that. I, I prevent any sort of ailments or symptoms. Yeah. I never have any symptoms, so I, you, you can only be a hypochondriac if you imagine sympt symptoms. Sean and Roger Moore are both hypochondriacs. Pills they look all the like time. these big tough guys. Worried about the no, yeah, disease. You, you, you just say, uh, you say, how are you? I never say, how are you? It's just 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 oh, minutes. With, with them, probably, 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, with 20 them. minutes. Yeah. Oh, I've got this thing, and I think I've got <laughs> a thing. And he yeah. goes, Sean, calm down. You've not got anything. Yeah. Now, when you um, look at a script, what are you looking for? If you read the first 10 pages and the last 10 pages and nothing is different, then nothing <laughs> happened in the other 90. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yes. You, know, if you look get... for development. You yeah. look for development, not only in you, in everything around yeah. you. And, that, uh, uh, um, and you look for depth. 
Have you ever seen a movie that wasn't good in the first 10 minutes that got good ever? Never. I haven't either. No. I mean, you can no. tell if there, somebody no. is in command of storytelling from the first 10 minutes. But when, when the actor opens his mouth, too. I remember yeah. Neil Simon, he went and saw Richard III once. <laughs> uh, and he said, the guy went, now is the winter. I said, stinks. And I was right. <laughs> he didn't even get the two words, four words. Out. Now is the winter. Stinks. That's he what said he the, said. That's what he, he said. said. He said, you can just stinks. tell. But you can, you can tell when you, when you see people whether the movie's about hmm. one minute I need and I'll tell you. You have, have you ever climbed, I mean, you have no great or haven't at any point because you seem like a guy's always had all the roles he needed. You haven't gone through great lulls, have you? Uh, Was there you ever? do go through, every actor goes through a lot. If you've been like the, the young star who gets the girl and all that and stuff, yeah. movie star. That's you for a while. <clears throat> for a long time, yeah. yeah. And then, then you get, <laughs> I remember I got a script yeah. and I send it back to the uh, uh, producer saying, the part of the lover is too small. And he sent it back to me saying, I sent it you to play the father. <laughs> and I went, oops. So I went rushing in the bathroom. I went, oh, my God, he's right. <laughs> yeah, so you took the part? <laughs> I didn't because I didn't like it in the end. I didn't want to work with him. <laughs> but, but then, you know, oh, you so go, you oh said, my I, God, I'm I, old. I'm now. going to another place. And then there's a, it takes a time. It takes a time for a producer to get used to you, you know, because yeah. you, you're, you're too old to play the young lover yeah. and then no one thinks of offering you you know they say well he's a star he wouldn't want to do that yeah. but then but then there's a difference you see between a movie star and a movie actor which is what i am now i'm right, a leading yeah. movie right. actor a movie star looks at the script and says how can i change this to suit me mm -hmm. like movie stars i've seen them do it we look at the script and say michael kane would never say that <laughs> michael <laughs> so kane would never say, do that was, you know? yeah. yeah it's great to see you again my friend great to see you charlie um much success with The Prestige. Thank you. And Sleuth, you'll be playing Lawrence Olivier's part. I'll be, yeah, I'm doing a remake of that with uh, Jude Law. But you're playing the part I'm created playing, by play, Sir Lawrence Olivier. Sir Lawrence Olivier. Lord Olivier. Lord Olivier. Lord yes. Olivier. I'm yes, only a sir, Lord, so I've the, got to I know, watch myself. I know. Are you proud to be a sir? Yes. Because while there, you and I had a conversation in which you thought you were being passed over. It, all my friends were knighted. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, I, what happened what's, to me? What, what, what's wrong with me? I'm... Yeah. I'm a, you know, yeah. but what happens? I think they all got get, got together and said, yeah. "We've got to get him knighted. Yes, get him in here. Bring him in here. Yeah. We want him in the club." Yeah, so I, I was knighted. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you, Charlie. Michael Kane, thank you for joining us. See you next time.